Welcome to Chris Farms and Extension Services, alias Chris Farm Nigeria. We are into General Farm Setup. To the kids are popping into our YouTube channel. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time you are watching this uh, this YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about soil preparation on the greenhouse. If when you finish building the greenhouse, this is a complete greenhouse. You can see the sprinklers, the walkway, the building, the design. This one is. 100 feet by 32 feet wide. That is to say, from here to here is 32 feet. From here to here, okay, from here to here is 100 feet. Why this is your pathway where you go through, and these are the plantations that are already uh, that is ongoing. We have um, this is dwarf banana, this dwarf banana, this uh, cuckoo yam. We just planted it this morning, so we've done the wet trim. This is um um this is a bed I want to use to plant uh, cucumber and um uh watermelon. I want to plant cucumber and watermelon here. We had spatches, we can one with this space because you are planting a lot of things. These are water leaves. You see, these are water leaves. Then we are going to plant amaranthus, which is the green. We are going to plant, um, we are going to do a lot of planting here actually. We are going to plant a lot of things here to give the uh, snail, when the snail comes in, you have enough food to eat. So as they are growing, they will be feeding them, they will be eating here. Then the formulated feed, can, we can introduce them. So uh, some doing this video specifically for someone that was asking me online on how the soil is prepared. First of all, when you are done, uh, building the house, what you need to do is to till. Tilling means you loosening the soil this way. You have to loosen the soil. You are going to loosen the soil, all the soil you will loosen them. Then you will sprinkle or incorporate poultry dung into the soil and allow it to stay for like three to one week before you can start doing any kind of planting you want to plant. Then, if it is in the dry season, now we are in the dry season, your sprinkler must be working. Look at the sprinkler here. All your, so you'll be owning your sprinkler so that the sprinkler will be sprinkling the place. But because of we are just planting now, we are now using direct water. You can see our host there. You can see our rubber. We now pour water directly so that whatever we plant will have enough water. We pour water directly using the bucket using the hose, using the bucket, pouring water directly on it because these are young plants, they are still growing, they need water. When they now have a good stop root, they cannot sustain themselves. And moreover, this is dry season, a dwarf, a drought usually affects what your plantain or your uh, Musa Sapinton species, which could be your plantain, your banana, whatever. So this is a dwarf banana that was implanted here. Why this is cocoa yam, we planted it, so we're wetting it, it will sprout out, we spring out. This is our bed, small, small beds for planting cucumber and uh, watermelon. You can see the water leaf is already growing. Very soon we are going to plant, um, what is it called? We're going to be planting uh, the widow, we are going to plant our ugu, we are going to plant... Uh, they are all here, but we are planting them small, small. Then the actual place, which is the soil preparation, you must till the soil to loosen the soil. You can see all these soils have been loosened. They've all been loosened. You sprinkle, you can sprinkle, um, what is it called? Manure, put it down on them. Then if you feel or you tested the soil, it is more acidic, then you are going to use ash. This is ash. You can see ash for bone wood, you sprinkle ash on them. This reduces the level of acidity on your soil. If you want to do it, but it's not compulsory, so that is how to prepare the soil. Then, for the manure you are going to use, if you want to use manure for your farm, you use the manure from uh, manure dryer. We sell manure dryer, so the way you use manure from it, it destroys or kills all those pathogens. Uh, nematodes that comes in the poultry, but when you use them, when you pass through the manure dryer, it dries up all the microbians there. The uh, okay, let me say the nematode precisely. 
the worm, it destroys them. So it made it fit for you to use in your farm. So the activity, the issue of transporting disease from wherever into your farm will be reduced. But if you don't have access to manure dryer products from the mother producing organic manure, if you don't have uh, if you don't have uh, access to it, and you decide to use uh, the manure from the poultry that is doesn't pass through the manure, you allow the manure to uh, decompose very well. Allow the long one that has taken long, so that all the bacteria in it will be dead. A practical example is this one here. This one is a long manure. You can see. If you touch it, it's like, you can see how it is, very dry, it's been long, that has been packed here, so it's now pure manure, you can see them, it has even turned black. Let me get some, look at it, it has, it has taken long. We, they, we left it here so it has really uh, decomposed very well and uh, the, if the seed in case there is any form of pathogen inside it must have uh, it must have been killed probably by the heat that was inside then if you want to use it for your crop you can use a practical example we did today we did a very small bed we want to plant our cucumber you can see we sprinkled it on top we didn't plant directly we sprinkled what we poured water on it as we poured water on it is to reduce the temperature of it of this manure tomorrow we'll pour water on it again then if we want to plant our cucumber we are not going to plant our cucumber here or our watermelon here if we want to plant it we'll plant it here this is where you plant it you don't plant it here you plant it here you plant it here you plant it here these are the places you're going to plant it by the side so that the heat or the concentration of the manure will not kill the plant. And when the plant grows up, it can easily assess the manure because as you're pouring water on this manure, the manure will be going down. Then the root of the uh, new cucumber or watermelon can easily assess the nutrients coming in from there. So that is how the land preparation is done. Uh, as I have told you, let me do a, a total rundown again. If you want to do this after finish building your place, the first thing you do is to remove all the stumps there. Look at some stumps that was removed. You can see all the stumps in the farm will be removed. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see them? All the stumps. You have to remove them using hacks. There is a hacks there. Let's go there. Let me show them. You are going to use axe. You can see axe. Those big big ones that are stubborn, you remove them. If you don't remove them, they will be generating plants like this. There is one here, and it's bringing me this. So we have to use this digger to dig it out. Use the axe to cut cut it off. Then we will prepare the bed for our cucumber and our watermelon. You can see how we are doing it. Then you, by then you might have loosened the soil and treated the soil before you start planting. You plant your dwarf banana, you plant your uh, cocoa yam, you plant uh, water leaves, uh, water, uh, water leaf, grain, potato, ugu, just plant crops that are edible. Any crop you can eat, you should know that the snail you want to put in the farm can eat it. So this is how to prepare the soil for your planting after preparing it you always turn on the sprinkler you have to allow whatever you planted to grow actually now this place are matching now there is no thing that are planted here because look at where the things you are planted here will be and when they grow they will sprout all over everywhere just give them some distance like here we give uh uh let's just say eight or seven meters and uh, seven feet apart look at one here look at another one here this is how we did it. This is another one here. That was how we did it. We spaced it out so that when they grow, they will work expand. So since we plant cucumber watermelon here, we are going to take in between now. Then we can plant uh, ugu. We can plant ugu, which is pumpkin, pumpkin leaves. Then we can still plant. We give it another space 
We can now plant um, our sweet potato. We are going to plant a lot of creeping crops. All these things are almost cover cropping. Why we are doing it is to make, ensure that when the snail comes in, they'll have enough to eat. We are going to plant a lot of crops here. Just fill the place with enough uh, green co uh, cover croppings so that the uh, so that the snails can have a place they can hide beneath the crop that is not cover croppings. Any of the cover croppings like the potato or more like it, creeping crops like this uh, sweet potato is a creeping crop. The ubu is a creeping crop. The cucumber is a creeping is a creeping crop. Uh, the watermelon is a creeping crop. And then we had the uh, water leaves. Uh, we have, um, what is it called? Amaranthus, which is green. We have other things we are planting here. Even a weed too, we planted here. All this is to make sure that the place is green, ever green for the snails. So when they come, they will have enough to eat. Then our dwarf popo, look at our dwarf popo is growing. It's not up to seven weeks. I will plant it. If our dwarf popo is not green, this upon her, he has not been drafted. A carica papaya, if this one is overgrown, we have to prune it. Then we have to put them in different places because they are just sprouting out. We are going, this one is overdue. We are going to separate them. We are going to, we are going to prune them. Then not even pruning now. We are going to uh, transplant them because they are much here. The right one is transplant. We are going to look, pour water on it, then bring them out on one. Then replant them when they've grown up to seven, eight weeks before we can not what dwarf it. Probably when that time we will show you how to dwarf a purple. These are purple or carica papaya, the box, depending on what you call it. In Nigeria, we call it purple. Uh -huh. Purple. Then when it's grown, you can see some of them that are fast growing. Come close, you see that this one has changed to. Uh, carica papaya when they are growing well, like this this is your this one is small you can't know that it's purple right but you can see this one is having that star like hand like this now has the three hand of purple it has come out and when it came away initially it's like this if you don't know it you will not know that it's this purple but it's purple look at this small one it's purple you will not know but when the things start growing up they will become the three the three leaf hand. We come and look at one, two, three. You can see it. This is the one that has grown very well. That is how it is. Then we are going to draw the purple at seven, eight weeks. Seven, eight weeks. We will draw that is almost two months or one month and let's say two months. We will draw the purple. Then we will now transplant them here. At the long run, here will be evergreen for the crops for the snails that is how lamp preparation is done you can loosen your saw using a shovel shovel is easier like if i want to loosen this stick now if I want to loosen let me just loosen this short stick now we've done that before if you loosen it is very easy all you don't need to do is to do it like this you see and you as you are sprinkling water they will come back to normal so why you are losing it is to allow easy penetration of whatever you are planting. So after after on the whole place will be filled with uh, green. And if it is during the dry season, please uh, try to use the sprinkler often times so that there will be enough water in the place. So this is how to do soil treatment for your uh, greenhouse. If you discover that the soil is acidic, you use ash as I showed you before. Um, if it is okay, you, there is no need for ash. Just use your poultry dung. It's okay. And the poultry, the prescribed poultry dung to use is the poultry dung that comes from, from a manure dryer. That one produces organic manure. You can use it. But if you don't have access to it, allow your manure to decompose very well like the one I showed you before. So that is how it is. So should in case you want us to build a greenhouse for you, this is our greenhouse. You can see how we'll build them. Have you seen it? This is how we build our greenhouse. You want to see the outer part of it? We can show you. Let's go out and see how it looks so that we see it from there.
So this is the outer one, this is how it looks. This is how the outer side looks. It has the uh, unit of strength where you put water so that any kind of uh, crop, sleeping crops can't enter the place because there will be water in here. So they step in, you lift it up from the ground. Then this is how it looks like. Have a door. When you want to come in, you come in. So this is how it's been designed. We do the A to Z of your farm. So in case you want us to do something like this for you, all you need to do is to contact us. Our number is 080-3692-5718. If you are not in Nigeria, remember to put our country code plus 23480. 36 92 57 18 will cover the whole country nigeria irrespective of your location just tell us that this is what you want we have so far design any kind of design you want will do for you thank you very much for choosing chris farm nigeria always know that your satisfaction is our optimum desire thank you